What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Dollar Mike back at again with another video. And this video is actually the part two of my original budgeting video or the budgeting video that I made about a week ago. So in this video, I'm basically just going to go over tons of different budgeting tips that would actually help you when it comes to actually making a budget because what's the point of actually making any money and not taking that money and building upon the money that you made previously to earn you even more money in the future. That could be through the stock market. That could be through your own business. That could be through anything else that you make money, your side hustles, anything like that. If you're making a lot of money, if you're making any money at all you still need a budget regardless of who you are so we're going to talk about some of my favorite tips when it comes to budgeting in this video so yeah that's kind of it that's how this video is going to play out if you haven't seen the original video i have it linked right up there so make sure you check the original video out and then come back and watch this one but past all that let's get right into the video don't like wasting your time let's go it's greatly appreciated if you guys could drop a like on the video that really supports the channel that's the best way to support the channel is just by hitting that like button it also supports the youtube algorithm which is a great thing make sure you also hit that subscribe button to see more content like this i make videos all about personal finance budgeting credit credit cards investing saving money everything anything like that i got you covered right here on the channel and lastly check out those links down below because those links down below will get you some free stocks some free cryptocurrency and some free other things like free money on gas discounts all that kind of good stuff the links down below are there to help you and they do just that so let's not waste any more time let's start off with my first budgeting tip so when i mentioned budgeting in the previous video i talked about the ways that i actually budget with my personal budget I actually show you guys my personal budget in that previous video so make sure you guys check that video out and i also talk about a different type of budgeting plan that works as well which is a solid budgeting plan and that's the 50 30 20 rule so using that budget 50 percent of your money would go towards needs 30% of your money will go towards wants, and then 20% of your money will go towards savings and investing. I personally think that's a great way for people that don't budget at all to start out budgeting, but past all that, you can actually go and branch out and budget basically your own way. You know, as long as you're actually getting what you want and reaching your goals, then all that doesn't really matter. As long as you budget for what you need to budget for, you should be all good to go. And that first tip is actually budgeting to zero. So if you're super serious about budgeting, you need to get right with your money at all times, at any time, you need to budget down to zero. If you're making $1,000 a month, you need to know exactly where that whole $1,000 a month goes. $20 may go towards this, $150 may go towards that, $500 may go towards rent or whatever it may be. But you need to know exactly where every single dollar goes. That way you budget all your money down to zero. You don't have to spend all that money down to zero, but you do need to know exactly where all of it is going. And the best way to do that is to actually budget down to zero. That way you know exactly how much you can spend, how much you can save, how much you can invest, and how much you can buy on whatever you want to buy with your money. And a great way to actually do that is having separate accounts. This could be separate bank accounts under different bank accounts, or this could be section off bank accounts under the same bank account. But the whole point is you have separate accounts for different types of savings goals or different types of money investments or anything you might have a separate account for. Personally, I'm not even sure off the top of my head right now how many banking or savings accounts I have. I would say I have roughly five or six bank accounts, maybe seven and about six or seven investment accounts. So I have a lot of different places where money can go, where money can be stored, where money can be separated. So if it's here, I can't spend it. If it's there, I do spend it. Or I might have a bank account where money actually goes to, but I don't actually have the debit card for that bank account. So basically I can't swipe any card to take any of that money out. The only way to take that money out is to transfer it actually on the banking account app or online. Either way, this just offers you more discipline with your money. If you have all your money sitting in one single bank account, you have three side hustles and a main job, all that's going to one single bank account, then you don't know how much money you're actually making from those jobs. You can say you do, and if you don't have budget, then you probably don't know how much. But if you have all those side hustles have a separate bank account because bank accounts are free for the most part. Make sure you sign up for free bank accounts. Don't sign up for bank accounts that charge you fees at all. It's tons of bank accounts that are free. Either way, if you have all your side hustles in a separate bank account, plus your main bank account for your nine to five job or whatever it may be, your investment accounts, all that kind of good stuff. If you have all that separate, you know exactly how much money you have in these accounts versus other accounts instead of having it all in one account. And then you feeling like, oh, well, you know, I got extra money when in reality you might have extra money, but you might also be spending extra money because you have extra money and that's not necessary. And if you have a budget, then you won't really overspend. If you don't have a budget, you probably will overspend. And I'm also not trying to say that my methods are the best way to actually budget your money or do whatever you want to do with your money. But that does lead me into my third point. And my third point is always make sure you're budgeting for yourself as well. Just because you're budgeting your money to get out of a situation you may be in, to put more money towards savings, to put more money towards investing, doesn't mean that you have to hurt yourself in the process. There's no reason in budgeting your money if you're not actually going to have fun with any of the money that you actually saved or invested. If you're just saving and investing money, cool, that's fine. But if you don't actually have any joy out of it or you don't get anything out of it, then 
you're gonna get kind of frustrated kind of fast. So all I'm really saying with that brief tip is basically just don't punish yourself. Have one of your savings accounts or multiple savings accounts go to something that you actually wanna do or actually wanna achieve. That could be going out to the movies, that could be buying new games, that could be buying makeup, that could be basically doing anything that you like to do because I don't know what you like to do. Let me know what you like to do actually down in the comment section below because I like to do a lot of different stuff. So yeah, it's, it's not that hard and don't make it hard on yourself. Next up is setting up direct deposits. And a lot of people already have direct deposits set up for wherever job they work at. But in the situation where you don't, that's perfectly fine. Sometimes jobs don't offer it. But when I mention setting up direct deposits, I'm actually talking about how you actually set up your direct deposit. Some jobs, not all jobs, but some jobs actually allow you to split up your direct deposit. So if you make $1,000 on your check every two weeks, a so $1,000 check, you might be able to take $20 of that and have it automatically go towards a separate account just straight from your actual job automatically. You'll still be getting paid the same amount, but $25 or whatever you have it set up to be would be pushed to a separate bank account at the same time you actually get your paycheck every two weeks. So in that case, the money's already out of your account. You're not worried about the money because it's already gone. You're not thinking about the money because it's already gone. Out of sight, out of mind. It's a real thing and it really does work when it comes to the world of budget. And if you're going to get paid and have your money set up that way where a little bit of it might go to a separate bank account versus your main bank account, that separate bank account could be one of the best tools that you need in life and that is an emergency fund. We all know what an emergency fund is. We all know when we use the emergency fund, but basically nobody has an emergency fund. 60% of Americans do not have an emergency fund or basically have an emergency fund, but they don't have enough to cover a $1,000 emergency. That is completely unacceptable. It has to change. If you can't cover a $1,000 emergency, then you're in trouble. So I would say as a goal for an emergency fund to at least start or try to save up $1,000. The real goal for an emergency fund is to actually save up all your expenses for three to six months. You can do longer than that, but I always ride with three to six months. Anything more than that, that's fine. Nothing wrong. I mean, the more money in your emergency fund is fine, but you don't need to have quadruple or two years worth of an emergency fund. I think that's kind of unnecessary. So I would say at most a year of your expenses in an emergency fund. But for the time being, start with $1,000. So try to get $1,000 into your emergency fund. After you get $1,000 in your emergency fund, find out how much money that you pay in bills or expenses over the three month period. Make sure that you have that in your emergency fund. And then after you get the three months, hit six months. After six months, hit one year. And then after a year, you should be okay. I think most people can get a job within a year. If anything were to happen like crazy where you couldn't work anymore, I think most people could be back on their feet within a year. That is a long time. But yeah, you need an emergency fund. Everybody needs an emergency fund. A lot of people don't have one and it's just, it's a staple. It's a staple, it's a tool. It'll change your life. It'll keep you safe with your finances. There's no reason why you shouldn't have one. So start saving for one today. I also made tons of emergency fund videos already and I'll probably make a more because it's just such an important topic. And still how I just mentioned, you need to save $1,000 or three to six months of an emergency fund or one year of an emergency fund. The whole point is you need to set yourself some goals because if you don't have goals, what are you really out here to achieve? That goal could be increasing your overall net worth. That goal could be buying you a new car or just getting a down payment for that car, buying a house, buying a new Xbox, buying a new PlayStation. It, it doesn't really matter. The whole point is if you're budgeting, you need to set some goals for yourself because what's the point in doing it if you don't have any goals to go after? The whole point of actually going out, budgeting, doing this whole grind, doing this whole setup, it's not anything difficult, but like I said, it's gonna get boring really fast if you don't actually have anything to achieve, if you're just doing it just to do it. A great app to have you track your goals financially is Capital. I've been using Capital for, I don't know, four years now maybe. I've saved over, I wanna say over $15,000 with Capital. Not all is sitting in there right now, but over the course of three, four years, I saved over $15,000 by using one single app. I have the link down in the description. I also made a video about Capital as well. It's not free anymore, which kinda sucks. I wish it was free. I think it's $3 a month or something like that, which I, I recommend it still, even though it's $3 a month. I don't recommend fees, but I've made, a, I've not made, I've saved a lot of money with this app. And if I didn't have this app, I know I would not have saved 15, 10, 15 thousand dollars with it. So in that sense, to me, the three dollar a month fee is worth it. But overall, you can still do all this stuff yourself. The capital ad just makes it a lot easier because it takes your money out automatically. You don't do anything. It all goes towards your goals. There's probably other apps out there. So let me know if you know any goal apps that, you know, basically you can pull money out of and stuff like that. Just drop a comment down below and let me know and I'll possibly make a video on it. But yeah, if you're not setting up goals for yourself long term and short term, then it might not be in your best interest to go and budget because you might feel as though or you might just get discouraged quickly. You might just get discouraged quickly and you might just stop budgeting. So set some goals for yourself. It's that simple. 
go and try it out. And trust me, it, it works. I've been I've been doing this for a while now. It works. I like it. The next tip is a golden one, and that is stay below your means. There's no reason if you get a raise from your job, there's no reason to actually go out and spend more money. You might make a you might have a twenty thousand dollar raise, but you're living a perfect life as you are now. If you get a twenty thousand dollar raise and you're living a good life now, there's no reason to go and spend an extra fifteen thousand dollars every single year. Sure, you can do whatever you do because it's your money. I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your money, but at the same time. If you just live below your means and invested the difference or saved the extra difference that you're getting every year now because you made so much more money now, then you would definitely be well off in the future. Like I said before, if you get a raise, that's great. Congratulations. Just don't go out and burn your whole raise because you got a raise. You know what I'm saying? That's all I got to say on that. I feel as though it's always a time to have fun, but as far as being reckless with your money, I don't know if I can really get behind that. The last tip on this list is a banger, but I would only recommend it if you're very responsible with your money, if you're very responsible with budgeting, and that is credit cards because credit cards offer you so much value. It's unreal. As long as you're using credit cards the right way, you buy stuff, you pay it off every single month in full. You're not doing any interest or anything like that. You're not paying any interest at all. We don't pay any interest on credit cards ever. We don't do that. If you're doing all that right, credit cards are your best friend and they're honestly uh, access to free money because it's 100% free money as long as you use these correctly. I racked up well over 120,000 points with my Chase Sapphire Preferred card. That can basically fly me anywhere in the US for free. I'll take that. With the Bank of America Cash Rewards credit card, I get 3% back, 2% back, and 1% back in all different types of categories. I can then change those categories to maximize my cash back. Can't really go wrong there. Currently, I have it set up for online shopping. And I think before I had it set up for gas. So 3% back in gas on top of the Get Upside app that I mentioned on the channel before. You're earning a lot of money back just for going to fill up your car because you have to do that anyway. So this is money you're spending anyway and you're just getting free money on top of that. Cannot complain. I'm telling you guys. And even more of a gem, the Apple Car, they also offer 3%, 2%, and 1% back depending on what you actually buy. But one of my favorite features with the Apple Car personally is that they offer 0% interest on Apple products. So you can actually go and get an Apple product, for instance, like an iMac or an iPad or anything like that. You can go and actually pick those things up, you pot, purchase it with the Apple Card, and don't have to pay any interest on it for the first year. So basically, it's essentially free. You get a payment plan with it that you don't have to pay any interest on. You can't go wrong with that. And as long as you're paying it off in full every single month, you want to pay any interest and you basically get the product now, you pay for it later. Some may say you might, you know, you might not want to do that in that sense. But as long as you're not paying any interest, I personally don't feel it's any issue with it, especially if you can afford it. Don't go buy things that you can't afford with any of these credit cards. But yeah, and that's just three of my credit cards. I actually have six different credit cards and plan on getting about eight most likely this year. So we'll see how things play out. All I'm saying is yes, you can use credit cards, but you need to make sure you're using credit cards as a tool because they basically earn you even more money, which you can then put into your budget to earn you more money, maybe in investing, maybe you wanna take that cash back, put it towards investing, maybe you wanna take that cash back and put it towards some of your goals or do whatever you wanna do because it's your money. So take advantage of that, use it as a tool, don't pay any interest and you'll be all good to go. So there you go. That is all the tips I got for you guys today. I believe that was about eight different tips regarding budgeting and stuff like that. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit this video with a like button. If you want to see more budgeting videos, I can make more budgeting videos. We can break down full-blown scenarios and stuff like that. But overall, I think that's that's good enough for this video. So if you enjoyed, like I said before, hit that like. I'm out. Take care of yourselves. Dollar Mike. Peace.